CBAS uh, stands for the Casco Bay Aquatic System Survey, and um, it's a long-term undertaking at GMRI to understand uh, ecosystem processes um, in Casco Bay. We're starting out with the plan of monitoring the ecosystem over 10 years. This will allow us to track changes that may be related to climate change, um, changing land use practices, and really get a better handle on um, how um, the, the biology and the ecology of the system responds to some of these um, external pressures. We have initiated um, monitoring of the Presumpscot River to better understand the physical characteristics of the water running into Casco Bay as well as monitoring the fish that run up into the fresh water of the system to spawn. We're interested in understanding the flow of energy between the Casco Bay estuary and the river system and so by tracking the uh, river running fish we can um, monitor this over time. We're able to determine, take uh, key measurements of length, weight, uh, as well as determine the sex of these fish. We also remove the otoliths, which is the inner ear bone of the fish, and from this we're able to determine the age of these fish. And from all these pieces of information, we can start to understand the characteristics of the run. For the sanding section of the project, we use the beach sand to sample near shore habitats around the Casco Bay Islands, Portland Harbor, and the Brazumscot River Estuary. Our net was 150 feet long by 8 feet deep with 3 8 inch mesh. With this net, we could close off a section of beach and then pull the net ashore to capture all the fish within the area. This is a great technique because we can use it to capture forage fish, such as juvenile herring, or larger individual fish, such as striped bass, whatever happens to be swimming by the time that we sample. With the SANE survey, we can look at the reproductive success of alewives from the Presumpscot River because we can catch the juveniles later in the summer that come down. We can also catch um, near shore pelagic fish such as herring that otherwise don't show up on our acoustic survey because they're too shallow. To observe patterns in plankton, we are sampling three stations in Casco Bay. The sea bass program is also helping to support a time series station called the Coastal Maine Time Series Station. That's about 30 miles up the coast in the Maine Coastal Current. But we are looking at the physical properties of the water column, including temperature and salinity. We are also looking at plant plankton biomass, and we're trying to determine how productive the system is. First, we want to determine how Casco Bay compares to the rest of the coastal ocean. What are the patterns of abundance and biodiversity in zooplankton, and how do they match up with what we see elsewhere? Long-term monitoring is going to help establish a baseline for the ecosystem and that's important for tracking ecosystem changes, particularly due to climate change. For the jigging section of the project, we used hook and line gear to sample offshore habitats in the outer part of Casco Bay. We fished for commercially important groundfish species, as well as ecologically important groundfish species. By doing the jig survey, we can get relative abundance, as well as size and age distribution of groundfish that are found in this area. We can also see how that changes not only throughout the year, but also by doing this survey in subsequent years, we can see how the stocks are doing. To monitor fish schools and plankton abundance, we're using acoustic surveys. This uses acoustic transducers that we mount to a pole on the boat, um, and this lets us learn about what's in the water column directly underneath the boat. We're getting very detailed um, information about every centimeter of the water column over a 45 mile long transect. I think the, uh, the Casco Bay system is really a, a great model because it's a small enough area that we're able to really intensively cover that area and get some information about almost every part of all the different habitats that we see there. Uh, but it's a big enough area that the types of patterns and distributions and changes that we might see on that scale are really gonna be applicable to larger areas.